Um, so, oh, we've tweaked the, tweaked the agenda just slightly. Um, we did a session yesterday and, and uh, we're thinking we can probably wrap up a little bit more before lunch. Um, so, the main thrust of this is a conversation about upgrading. Um, what are the thoughts about upgrading? Um, whether you should and how you should. Uh, then we've got a, a little comfort break, and then we're going to talk about Dynamics 365. I'm sure some of you will have seen marketing stuff from my talks about Dynamics 365, so we just want to put that in position. Where does that stand in upgrading? Um, my friend, Mr. Uh, Dredge, will talk about pricing and other exciting things. Open Q&A and lunch, but obviously over lunch we can continue the Q&A. So... People always say about uh, how do I up, how would we upgrade? What does an upgrade mean? And of course, in reality, it depends where you are today. If you're upgrading from the version last year to the version this year, that's different than upgrading from the version in 1996 <laughs> to the version. So it depends where you're coming from. Um, and I usually start by asking, how many of you think you've got a classic nav system? And then in the desperate hope that you understand what that means. <laughs> so, so. Who system looks like that? Oh, very good. The one, the next one, the three to two thousand and nine. Yeah. Anybody got that one? No. Oh. No. Oh, you got that one as well. Okay. So that's the early RTC, the first RTC version, and then that one is the what we call Generation Two. Just, just the one, Mr. Aspen. Yeah. Uh, yours is 2016. Yeah. So obviously, depending on where you're coming from there, uh, it makes a lot of difference to how you go forward with an upgrade, and hopefully I'll talk, um, explain that a little bit more today. Uh, so we, we refer to those first three as Generation 1. They were basically, it was the same, pretty much the same from 1995 to this version here, which is a bit of a straddle, this, this version 2009, uh, RTC is halfway in the old world and halfway in the new world, but in its technology, it was really in the old world. So where does uh, we've got thirteen, not thirteen R two? Where does that? You've got thirteen, yeah. So that's any version between twenty thirteen up to two thousand seven. So it look like that's, that. Um, uh, what in terms of the little? Yeah. Yeah, the very first version, twenty thirteen. You're, right. yes, yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yes. That one is more representative of all the rest of them. <laughs> but you're right. So, depending where you're coming from, you're, you're at least in Generation 2. Um, all the rest are in Generation 1. Yeah, you're just, you were the first lucky version. Um, so, and that's sort of where, that's the way it looks now. It's what uh, Nav is uh, pictorially like when you log in now. So. And you'll see at the top that actually says Dynamics 365, but that is NAV, and we'll explain more about that. In the second half. So, um, some of you, certainly Malcolm, has been to sessions like this before where I spend the first part explaining reasons why you think you should upgrade and you probably shouldn't. Okay, that's, that's my, my opening starting point is people often think they should upgrade and they don't because the reasons are not valid and they could do other things. So, I want to go through uh, a little bit uh, around this because. People have interesting uh, feedback and, and reasons for doing an upgrade, which are not always logical. So, when we talk to people about upgrading, good morning. When we talk about upgrading, um, there are many different reasons. And in reality, you could probably go from the I don't know, I've just got a really old system and I feel like I should get a newer one. I mean, there's obviously, especially when people come in new to an organization, you're the new finance director or the new IT guy, you look at it and you go, blimey, they've got a 15-year-old system. We should definitely be on a new system for, for no other reason than it's old. And you know, my, my usual comment about that is software doesn't rust. If it does the job 15 years ago, it still does the same thing now. You know, I like it to look differently. And most of that is about our expectation. We think it should look different. Uh, but if it did the job and you're the same company, it's probably still doing the job now. The most common reason when we talk to people, they'll have a number of reasons, and the most common is nearly always my system is slow, performance is bad. It's generally they've got a 15, you know, 10 to 15 year old system, it's got loads of data in, they've never had any performance work carried out on it, and, 
and therefore they think I should upgrade because it'll be quicker. Okay, it's probably the most common in of all the reasons. Um, and so as part of this sort of uh, myths and truths, um, if the only reason you were upgrading is that your system is slow, you can definitely spend an awful lot less money and get your system sped up. There's, I, I would say that uncategorically. We've never seen a system that is slow and needs to be sped up that you can speed up by doing some stuff a lot cheaper than doing an upgrade. Okay? So if that isn't your reason, there's all sorts of things. Invariably, it's poor indexing on the database, and, which you never noticed over the first couple of years. But as data gets bigger and bigger, those, those inefficiencies of lack of indexing are things that you could easily solve when you identify them and easily speed the system. Um, one of the reasons that people's new system is faster than their old system is when they go into an upgrade project, they buy new hardware. So just buy some new hardware for your old system. That's a very cost-effective way of speeding up your old system. Hardware's cheap these days. Uh, it's, there are things at the, at the database level, at the SQL backend. Upgrade your SQL to the latest version of SQL. You'll, you'll definitely get improvements. There are some small upgrades that we'll talk about in the next, uh, the next couple of slides. There are, again, quick and easier ways to get performance in your system. A slightly bigger uh, thing is to do something about the data. We had one customer, Foot Asylum, very large retailer, 100-odd uh, stores, uh, very big database. It grown to, it's about 15 years old system, grown with every single pair of training shoes they've sold for the last 15 years. Uh, so they, at the time, didn't want to go through an upgrade, but they wanted to sort out performance. And actually, there was a load of data they were never using in the system. We just did a project to restart them on the same version of software they were running on with an, a reset set of data. We cleared out all the items they never sell, all the transactions, cleared out the item ledger, reloaded the stock, reloaded the general ledger, and they started from a fresh set of data. So on day one, their performance was massively better just because they had an awful lot less data in the system. So it's an example of, uh, of that. So performance is definitely something you can pay money and get solved. Um, to be, often people say they want to be on a more standard version. Uh, usually that's a feeling that if they're on a more standard version, the future upgrades thereafter will be easier. That is quite true. Um, I, my, my comment usually is, depending on the version that you're on, if it wasn't standard at the time, why do you think you'll be standard in the future? That's Now, of course, if you're on a very old 2.6 version in the 90s, loads more functionality. If you look at it from about version 5 onwards, yeah, there's some new modules, cash flow, and a few other bits and pieces. But most of our experience of what people have modified in their systems are things to do with the business sector that they're in. They're in the steel industry or the potato industry or something which is which has its own nuances and therefore you had modifications made for that industry. It is highly unlikely that that industry is any more supported in the latest version than it was in the old version. Okay. So it's a perfectly good thought and often people will say, well actually we had modifications for something but in reality it's not that important. We know with hindsight it's not that important and, and actually we could use the standard and just accept that it's not quite as good as the thing we had modified. That's a perfectly valid approach. So you know, often you realize you could have used the standard functionality it would have been quite as good, but it, it does mean you would have saved a whole bunch of modifications. But just being careful about, do you really, can you really get to that more standard version is an important point. Um, often people want to upgrade because they want to get a new like they want to redo their chart of accounts, they want to redo their product structures, and so on. That is very similar to the My System is Slow one. If that was the only reason, if you said, we've got a new accountant, he wants to have a new chart of accounts and a new dimension structure, it's quite a big thing to say, therefore, we should upgrade everything, just because this guy wants to analyze the account differently. Again, you could do a piece of work to simply do that piece of work. Redo, redo the dimensions, redo the chart of accounts, you know, write some converting from old structure to new structure. So it's true that as part of the upgrade, you get that opportunity, and that's a good thing to do as part of an upgrade is to rethink about those, those structures and, and so on. It wouldn't be the only reason you need to do it, would be my point. 
Um, broaden usage to other users is quite an interesting one. So often people have got a bunch of users who in the past were not ERP users, uh, but we want them to start consuming information. That's going to talk a, bit, a little bit later about um, sort of the ge generational expectations now. You know, people that are in their 30s or whatever just expect when you go, when they come to work for you, that they can access the information on their mobile phone. Why wouldn't they? They can access everything else on the mobile phone. So often people want to start using handheld terminals for maybe, I don't know, delivery drivers to, to get signatures on, uh, on, on the delivery Ex expenses to be put on and take a picture of your receipt and put your expenses on using a mobile phone. There's all manner of things that you can do that broaden the usage for people who are not normally ERP users. And one of the things that you get with an upgrade is the ability to do that very easily because the mobile client is standard, the web client is standard, the tablet client is standard. So that is definitely something that you will get as part of an upgrade, like all these things. But again, if there was one reason you were trying to do it, we want to upgrade because we want users to put their expenses in by handheld terminal, that would be an expensive way to do that one thing because there are plenty of technologies that we can use to plug into older versions of the system to still provide that capability. So again, all of these are reasons that, of things that will be solved as a part of an upgrade, but individually they could equally be solved on your existing systems. That's the same as the add mobile capability below. To get improved functionality is a bit like the more standard version. It depends where you are today, how much more improved functionality you get. The farther you go back, if you're on a 2.6 system, clearly the functionality now uh, is vastly superior. If you're on 2016 and you go to 2018, of course that gap is much is much smaller. Um, but often the improved functionality you want, of course, could, if, if there was one thing that you wanted, ah, we want, for example, in new version of NAV, there is the concept of uh, spreading, a, um, sort of doing a accrual or prepayment from a purchase invoice. So I put an invoice on for rent and I want to post it into 12 future periods, for example. That's a new facility in, in uh, 2018. 16, I think. Equally, if you wanted that feature, of course, you could have that put into any older version of NAV. So generally, just picking one bit of functionality and saying, we want to upgrade because we want that functionality, that's an expensive way to get that one bit of functionality. Okay. So, so again, you get that, but you, it's, it shouldn't be the only reason. Game workflow capabilities. In the new version, there is some standard workflow. Um, but again, we have many customers where we implement our, we've got an enhanced workflow that we can plug into any version, go back to, to, to any old version, which means that even on an old 2.6 system, you can still get workflow. Um, and to improve reporting. Reporting specifically isn't necessarily improved in NAV. It's usually as part of the project, you decide to build in business intelligence or start using jet reports and all other things that that of course you could also do today. So when we take over customers, as we often do from other resellers, improving reporting by adding jet reports is one of the first things we generally do if they haven't already got it. So as I said, all those things are reason, things that will improve as part of an upgrade, but they're certainly something you don't have to upgrade to achieve any of those. Does that make sense? There's a few other reasons that, that people often do. Uh, the I have to technologically, we're finding more and more that, you know, especially interesting after the British Airways debacle the other the other month, how many CEOs must have come back and gone, blimey, could that happen to us? <laughs> you know, do we have disaster recovery? You know, are we on supported versions of software and so on? So that technological change is more and more a driver for doing an upgrade. We're currently on some really old system, on some really old server, you know, the, the, the software obviously is not supported by Microsoft anymore, although we, we support it. Um, but as part of a technological refresh, people are looking more and more at doing the upgrade as part of that. It's not just not the only thing they're doing, they're upgrading all of the systems as well. So that's, that's quite often the reason. Um, often people want to improve business processes. It's quite an interesting one because clearly there is no reason why you couldn't improve those business processes in your existing system. But we do know, even from our own experience internally here, that as part of a project, it is more easy to say, on the new system, you now have to do this, which is harder to do for some reason on the, on the system you've got today. You physically could do, let's say, take non-stock purchase order processing. Lots of people don't do non-stock purchase order processing. 
and then max the invoice to it and so on. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward thing. You've been able to do it since the year dot on nav. Lots of people still don't do it. So if you try tomorrow to go back to this to the organization and say, we've decided you've all got to raise a purchase order on NAV and get it approved uh, before you can order a new computer or hire a car or whatever. For some reason, there's a struggle to do that. <laughs> Whereas if you go, as part of our new system, when we implement the new system, purchase order processing will now be done this way. You know, it's an easier thing to bring along. So it's certainly not something you have to do to improve business process, but it's a really good thing to do at the time. You get very few chances to literally look at how your business and your departments work together and decide to do it differently. It's a big part of what we do as, uh, as part, especially the clean start upgrades, which we'll talk about later, is to have that conversation. A lot of people do it corporate governance. Lots, if you're a PLC these days, there'll be a, you'll get an audit point saying you're on an unsupported version of software. It's not supported by Microsoft. That's all they care about. You're on an unsupported version. You have to be on a supported version. That's becoming more and more of a thing, certainly with the, uh, US companies and so on, but actually most PLCs as well. Often people want to access new add-ons. Again, you don't have to upgrade to access those add-ons. Lots and lots and lots of NAV add-ons have been around for many years and they work on old versions as well as new versions. It's certainly true, you obviously get to get the best version of those add-ons. Compatibility integration is a very good one. You will definitely, the integration on the latest version with doing very little is extremely good. You get a lot of integration and compatibility with third-party pieces of software through the latest version. Of course, you could equally do that with your version you've got today. And the very last one is lots of people are in IT and they simply want the new thing to play with. And it's a perfectly good reason, because you're not writing the check, but, but that's quite common. I want the latest thing to play with. Um, so this is um, uh, a case study of showing why you don't necessarily need to upgrade. My friend Mr. Asper in the front here uh, is not at this company anymore, but he'll for sure over lunch will, will tell you the tale here. Uh, a company uh, had, I think it was 3.6 version of NAV, certainly an old version of NAV. Um, uh, they, their performance was terribly, terribly slow. Uh, that was one big problem. So they, were, they think, so with, they weren't with us, they were with another reseller. Uh, their performance was very slow, they had a bad user uh, satisfaction, they had a very, very modified system, and they wanted to be more standard. Uh, they, would, they had 3.6 clients, and they were told that that 3.6 client wouldn't work on Windows 7. So they had to keep all these non-Windows 7 machines, because they couldn't upgrade the client that sits on the desktop to Windows 7. Okay? They were told by their reseller, therefore, because of that, you'll have to upgrade. The new version does run on Windows 7. Now, this, is a, this was a big upgrade. This was not a small thing. It was <laughs> you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds upgrade. So, and they had some pretty poor reporting. So we, we bumped into them uh, in uh, about 2013. Uh, by that point, they were three years later in the project. They're still not live. They, their system that they had in the test system, which was the thing they were upgrading to, was easily as modified as the version before. And in fact, he had a big ISV plug on top of it as well, a big add-on product. So if anything, it was probably more modified than the thing they got before. They were still on 2009 because they started it earlier. By the time this three years had passed, they were upgrading to a 2009 classic system, even though the latest version of now, the Generation 2 product, was already out. So had they been successful in getting the upgrade, they would have upgraded to the old version. Right? So... To some degree, they were quite lucky they didn't actually successfully get there, probably. They were significantly over budget uh, so to the fitness, but it was a lot of money. And they had abandoned the project. Okay, so they got this point saying, this is ridiculous. We have spent loads of money on this. We haven't achieved any of the things that we thought we could achieve for it. They, they, they came to us as another uh, reseller and said, you know, what should we do about it? So... They had a big performance problem. We went along and we solved some very key performance problems, creating one large invoice for Tesco's was taking, I can't remember, I mean, it was like 10 minutes or something. It was a huge amount of time to create one fairly large invoice for Tesco's uh, each day. You know, long, long, long time. We, like, In the first day we were there, we fixed that one thing. It was just a coding thing. It was just a, you know, it was just bad code that, that, uh, that we sped that up to seconds. Um, we did a technical upgrade of the client. We'll talk about this a bit later. We'd moved the client just the client, so the technological piece of this 
system to the latest version, which was the 2009 classic version, which meant they could then use their old system on Windows 7. That's all they really needed to do. The idea of when the guy said you need to upgrade, all they actually needed to do was do about a day or two's work to upgrade the, the client. We stabilized a bunch of user issues. We stuck in some things like workflow and document management. We developed a handheld terminal uh, to help with their goods in process, even running against their old system. And as of today, they're still running on the same system. Okay, so they solved all the problems they thought they were going to solve with an upgrade by not doing an upgrade and staying on the system they're on for another several years. We did a lot of work on BI as well. Yes. With ClickView and yeah. stuff. Yeah, thank you. That's a good point. I the previous one, the performance problems. They plugged in ClickView into their old system, solved a lot of those, the reporting problems, which also helped with the performance because now they're reporting against the, the BI tools instead. So now, now from a, from a sort of fresh, clean perspective, they're now thinking, right, now we might want to rethink about upgrading to this brand new, lovely, shiny system. Okay. So it's just a good example of, you know, you don't have to upgrade to solve your problems. And especially when they were told that they had to do it because of that Windows 7 problem. And it's just disingenuous. So what is an upgrade? What do we mean? If you're on one of those version classic uh, systems, the classic uh, the generation one, the thing that you should definitely do if you haven't done it already is to make sure you're on on SQL, because lots of people on classic versions are still using the old Nevision database, as was called. You should do a technical upgrade, which is a day or two's work in general, depending on the size of your system, um, which means that you're using the latest version of the client. And you could consider doing that restart we talked about, as in get rid of some old data. Okay? Either get rid of some old data or literally start from again uh, on, on, with, with new data. Okay, so those are options if you're on an old version. Anybody here not on the 2009 classic client on their system? Yeah. That that's, should be a no-brainer. It's, it's, it's very little work to do. In general, you get some performance improvements. I'll talk about it in a, in a moment, but, but it, it, there's no reason not to do that. It's a small bit of work. If you're on an old version, Generation 1, and you're looking to move to what will now be 2018, if any of you were starting a project now, you, we'd be moving you to 2018. It's going to be in October. Um, there are two options, a clean start or a full as is. Again, I'll talk about what those are, but really this is starting from scratch, thinking about how you want everything. This is running some technical processes to convert your existing system, your existing modifications, your existing data. Okay? So you get some benefits uh, depending on which of those two ways you go. If you're on anything after 2013, uh, then you can do a technical upgrade in the same sort of way. You can basically upgrade the technology part of your system without worrying about the functionality and the screens and everything else. Just upgrade the technology. It's, you know, again, low number of days, uh, depending on your, on your system, uh, to do that. And that gives you the latest technology. Okay. You could, of course, decide to do a clean start. I think in your case, that would be after two years, might not be a good thing to sell to the board. <laughs> but you know, if you're on 2013 and you think actually now with hindsight, we want to start again because then we've got a lot of thoughts about this, this system, you might decide to do that, it's less likely. Um, and you could do a full cold code conversion from your whatever your version of is, run through the code conversion, the data conversion process, and get properly on the latest version. Okay. So the, the highlighted ones are the ones that virtually everybody in the old world does a technical upgrade. Most people don't do a restart. But most everybody does a technical upgrade. In the classic to 2018, most people do a clean start. In the, you're already on generation two, most people do a full as is. It's pretty 50 50 actually between that and the technical upgrade. So explain each one, each one of those. The, this is what we call the lipstick on a pick, okay? <laughs> so you've got an old system, you don't want to go through the full uh, expense and, and complexity of a full upgrade, you stay on your classic version. At least you update the client to the latest version. That's the first thing, you should always do that. And if you're not on SQL, you should definitely move to be on SQL as a backend. It doesn't change any of your functionality. It doesn't change the database structures, it doesn't change anything that users really see. And all your data still stays, okay? And, but it does give you the ability to then 
add the latest add-on. Usually you've got to be on the 20, 2009 classic client to be able to add a lot of these classic add-ons. Okay. You, you then get better integration because you get web service technology. If you go to that 2009 classic, even though you don't change the screens, you do get the web service technology, you do get the better SQL connector, which improves performance. Um, when you do that, you are then on the last version that you can do that technical upgrade. There is not a technical upgrade after that. It's the last thing you could possibly move to on that generation one. But then you can add to it things like mobile apps, like mobile now, for example, and you know, the third party apps, you can add to it. You can add, add reporting, as, as Gary said, you can add click view or Power BI or any of the other things to, to connect the data. You can add workflow and document management and a whole bunch of add-ons that, that we've got that work equally well, panels and tiles, they all work on the old classic system. So you can add, you can add jet reports if you haven't already got it. Um, so, and, and our enhanced nav product is a whole bunch of modules that you can stick on your old system. Say you put lipstick on a pick, it's relatively cheap to do. You get a whole bunch of new features that, you know, you can improve your workflow, you get purchase order approval, you get, uh, uh, email integration into NAV, you've got all sorts of whole bunch of things. So it's cheap to do, you get a bunch of nice things out of it. It's, I think, at least the default option. As an example of this, Salt Theater, one of our customers, 2.6, of the very early systems, I put it actually, 1998. Um, they're a steel company, their margins are very tight. They, didn't, they wanted to improve some stuff as a business, but they didn't have the funds to do a full upgrade. So they did exactly that. They, they were on an old nav database. We upgraded to the latest client. We added JEP so they could do some better reporting. We stuck in our enhanced nav. Uh, they had a whole bunch of purchase order approval and, and customer approval uh, workflows put in. Good example of, and it was you know, in the sort of, I don't know, 10 daisy sort of bracket in terms of doing that. So they got a lot of stuff for a small amount of time. Um, and basically what you do with a technical upgrade is you know, it's in the few days if you do, depending how many of those other things you add on. Obviously, if you say I want mobile now, but I want to you know, add workflow so on, of course that increases the number of days. But to the actual technical upgrade is a very small uh, piece of work. You do it on the test system, you make sure everything's okay, you install it on the live system, you go live. It has very little effect. There's nothing that's different from an end user perspective. So the only thing I've put as a last note, we had one customer in all the years we've been doing this, we've done loads and loads of these. One customer, massive customer, a thousand online concurrent users, you know, so yeah, terabyte of data, huge system. We had never seen a decrease in performance as a result of doing this. Did it on the test system, of course, you test it, it all seems to be okay. They weren't able to persuade the business to do a full test on the test system. So they went live, suddenly got a thousand users on this new system, first day, ran like an absolute dog. And it turns out, which they hadn't told us before, that several years before they'd had a, an awful lot of SQL tuning done by a third party company on their NAV database. The trouble is when you do SQL tuning, you do it to the version of NAV you're on. So the things that they had tuned, which made their old version fast, actually were, made the new version slow. So we had to remove all of that tuning to make it go for the speed it should have gone. So that was one, but that's only so if you've had a lot of SQL performance tuning on your system, you should let us know before you do this. A clean start. So if you're old on an old version of uh, NAV and you want to do a clean start because you want to get to a 2018 or whatever. Um, this really, we call it an upgrade. And it's better for you if you say to your boss, it's an upgrade. In reality, it's a re-implementation, right? So now, it's not the same as going to a brand new piece of software because all the stuff that's in now that you know is exactly the same. The customer structure, the vendor structure, the chart of account dimensions, account schedules, and all the stuff you know is obviously still there. But if you do a clean start, you're, you're really saying, we are going to start with an empty new NAV version, 2018, we're going to load it with the customers, but only the customers that are still that are customers now. We won't get load customers that have not stopped using us 20 years ago and are dead now. Uh, we're not going to load items that we don't sell anymore. We're not going to bring across all the item ledger nonsense that was from 10 years ago. We're just going to start afresh as if we were loading it for the first time. So, and 
if you do this, you're also not bringing across your modifications from your existing system. You're going to rethink with this new 2018 system. Imagine we were coming from a different, completely different system. We would do some sort of review. Well, we have an additional bit of functionality when we put an invoice on that does this. Do we still want to do that and add that functionality to the new version as if it's a new modification? Okay. Now, of course, you can borrow some of the code from the old system, but it's not a, you're not running a technical process to get here. You're thinking about those modifications. It gives you the benefit of hindsight. You get a whole bunch of things that, yeah, we asked for that. It's loads of modifications and we hardly ever use it. We, when we went to one customer, they had a whole add-on that they'd spent, I would think, 50 or 60 days, never used it since it was live. So, um, and you get the opportunity to rethink your structures, your, your data structures, your chart of account, your dimensions, and so on. So you do that, you also can then add some uh, add-ons like the workflow, the Power BI, and all those other things if you want to. So the end result is you have a new system and you probably do that clean start <coughs> because you want to simplify and standardize your system. If you, if you do a full upgrade, which is the next one I'll talk about, then you're bringing across your mods from the previous system so you're not getting near a standard, it's all the same stuff. This way, you are getting as near to standard as you can be because if you don't make any mods to it, it, it is standard. Okay, so you're starting from standard and you're deciding whether you want to modify the system. That one gets you the ability to rethink how you implement it and use the software. Uh, that's, a, that's a big thing. I'll talk a little bit in a moment about how, when we did this internally. Um, you get the maximum gain of functionality because you can use whatever is there without thinking, well, we can't use that new feature because we've got a similar thing over here we had modified before. So you get to think, look at all the functionality. Could we use that functionality? Should we use service management instead of jobs? There's a classic one if anybody's got jobs and resources or service management. They're, they're, they're both interchangeable and they have some benefits. And you might have made decisions in the past that, that, that you could change now. You, performance is impacted because, of course, you start with empty data, so you, you obviously have a lot of uh, data-related improvements to performance. Um, you get to change all of your critical business processes to do exactly what you want as of now, not as it was 10 years ago. And it is much more compliant in terms of, you know, it's much more standard. You're doing things the way most people do things. And obviously, if you do that, you get a whole bunch of add-ons that will work as standard just by plugging them in. So an example of this is a software company called the Nav People. We had uh, we had an old, I can't remember, version five system from when we first started the company. We started the company with four people. So you can imagine we had a bunch of processes which fit in a small company. And by this time we were, you know, it's whatever, 70 people at the, at the time, 80 people. So thing, processes didn't work, uh, data that we didn't collect data in, in Nav that we should have done, all sorts of things. So we put in 2013 when it first came out, the same version that you've got for 2013. We actually did a technical upgrade when the next year into R2, and re last year we upgraded to 2016, 20, 20, I think we've gone to 2017 as well. So we do kept doing the technical upgrade, even though we're still on the 2013 functionality. Um, we looked at all our processes, we looked at the whole job to billing process. We automated much, much more than we had automated on the previous system. 2013 had a timesheet system, we had a bespoke timesheet system, so we used the standard timesheets instead of our old bespoke. So we didn't bring across any of our mods from our old system. We just said, okay, there's timesheets now, let's use that. Let's enhance it if we want to, but let's start from standard. We added a whole bunch of CRM processes like incident management for our customer service desk. Again, that was bespoke on the previous system. Uh, we, put, we started to use mobile nav and workflow for approvals and so on. We've got a planning board that we use to say who's doing what on what day. And they manage it all 100 odd people with that planning board. We improved our BI. We've got some panels and tile dashboard, which you can go and look at, sort of look at the guys in support. You're a pot around there. I'm sure they'd love to see you. They've all got these nice dashboards with how many calls are open and how many calls that need to be reviewed and so on. Um, and as I say, we upgraded to 2016, which gave us the, the web client and the mobile client. Uh, we're actually on 2017 now. Um, and because we then got the mobile client, on a phone, that meant that we could put in mobile expenses. We have 130 odd people now. Expenses, you know, used to be a big pile of envelopes, a big pile of receipts in an envelope getting sent to the lady in the account who had to go through all those little bits of paper. Now, now we all take a photograph of the receipt, put in the information, it's straight into NAV, she reviews it, she can see the receipt picture against it, it gets automatically processed through the purchase letter. 
So, but we did that because we were able to add the mobile client very easily with a technical upgrade. So, so by doing the technical bit, you get access to other things because you have now got a mobile client. So I would say if anybody's on any version from 2013 onwards, at least do a technical upgrade to, to the latest version. Again, that's a fairly simple thing. We also did a clean start to a company called Rotary. And I put this, use this one as an example because they wanted to be near a standard. They were on an old 4.3 system, which is, you know, was 12 years old or something. They had lots of unnecessary mods. You know, when we looked at their modifications, they had a whole bunch of things. They didn't even know what they were. They had fields on the screen they never had used. They had to put something in this field, but they don't know why, because it never gets used anywhere, but it, it was a mandatory field. So they wanted to be near a standard, and they were very keen. Just want, we're not going to have any modifications, put in standard software. So we implemented it. We added uh, workflow and document management. We put in jet reports, which it didn't have. But they didn't tell the users it was clean start. They kept using the word upgrade internally. So although all the way through the process, users had never seen on the UAT system certain functionality, they still somehow believed that the next week <laughs> this functionality was going to be there. So because they thought it was an upgrade, they had an expectation that everything was going to be there. So if you're going to do a clean start, it's very important that the user community understand that what you're getting is what you are seeing. In the UAT process, in the training process, that is what you're getting. Don't, in the back of your head, think, I can't see the so-and-so field, but I'm sure they'll be, able to be bringing that on. It's an upgrade, yeah? And that's what they had here. Every time somebody would say, well, where's the report for so-and-so? You say, well, that's never been there <laughs> on this new system. So oh, I just presumed it was, a, it was an upgrade. I presumed that would be there. So that's a very important lesson. If you're using the word upgrade, at least make sure you're telling them it's a clean start upgrade, and therefore you get exactly what you're seeing in the test system. And they need to be aware of that. And in reality, we ended up having, therefore, as you can imagine, to go back and make it much more non-standard because there were lots of things the users belatedly said, yeah, we need this, we need this, we need this. So when you do a clean start, we usually start with some kind of after the possible. We usually do a presentation, uh, often to a large group of users. We did it recently at SES for the board and a bunch of other people, big main users. And we're really showing, look, here's all the stuff in the new system. Because if you don't know all this stuff that you could potentially have, you don't know how to think about what you might want. If you don't know what workflow is and how it works and getting a response in an email that you can send back and get the system automatically move it to next status and so on and so on, and electronic forms and dashboards. And so we, so we do the other possible thing. Look, this is the stuff you get in the new system, which has a, 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 the, the purpose of getting people excited about the idea they're going to change some software. That's a good, you know, gets them engaged in the process. Um, we often will do a hot week build, either with the customer or without the customer. In other words, we sit here often with the customer in a room, bring some of your data along, bring your items, customers, vendors, charter accounts. We'll wind up a 2018 system. We'll stick some stuff in. We'll add the workflows and the rest of it. And now you've got, right at the beginning, a new version of your system that you can show back to the users. That's just the start of the project. Of course, you've still got to now look at the business processes and whether you want some modifications done to it and so on. But it very quickly gets you your own tailored version of 2018 that you can start to look at internally. Um, you have to then agree the modifications and data conversion. You have to go through the day in the life processes and say, right, what does purchase to pay look like? What does sales to cash look like? Decide if you need any modifications and very clearly decide what you want to do on data conversion. If you do a clean start, you're starting from nothing, and the only stuff that's in there is the stuff that you have decided to bring in. So we bring in a journal to bring on open entries in the general, uh, sorry, to bring on general ledger um, information. We bring on open entries for sales ledger and purchase ledger. We don't bring on historical payment information and so on. So you might want to bring only a subset of items on. You might want to renumber your, your items or whatever. So all of that is about data conversion. It's a very, very important subject. Bearing in mind, the old system doesn't go away. So just because you didn't bring across the general ledger from six years ago, you still got it in the old system. It doesn't go away. We don't just turn that old system off. Yeah? You're just starting to use the new system. So you can still access even report from the old system as well. Um, we then go through that joint together. We're building that new system. We present it back to the users. We communicate to the users. Test the system and go live. That's an oversimplification because it depends on complexity of your business, but fundamentally that's the process. It's like a new implementation. That's the most important thing. And then, then you get to a full upgrade. A full upgrade means we take your system, 
we run some upgrade scripts which Microsoft have given us over the years to move it from 3.6 to 3.7, 3.7 to 4, 4 to 5. You have to go through all this cyclical upgrade process to finally get all your mods onto the new version. And there's a similar process with the data. So you move the data from the old system, you store it, and you bring it into the new system. Okay. So it's a technical process. Um, you get all of your mods, you get all of your data, and you don't rethink the processes. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing just depends. Yeah. An example of this was um, uh, a guard center that wasn't our customer at the time, came to one of these sessions, had this conversation. They had not long before upgraded from uh, another very, very 2.6 version of NAV to uh, 2013, and they did it through a full upgrade. And the guy was sat in the back with his head in his hands when I was explaining about the clean start because he was saying, yeah, we went, we did a full upgrade. I've got every plant I have sold since 1997, <laughs> every single you know, plant and book you know, in this new database. So they still got this horde of items they've never sold you know, because the whole stuff came across. Well, that's not a good place to start. Is it? What, why, what value does that add? So if, you know, if you've got to think about it, there are people that we have this conversation with and decide to do this, uh, and it's the right thing for them, but it's worth thinking about. Do you really want all of your modifications? And it's very hard to say, yeah, most of them. Okay, most of them means we upgrade all, and then we have to do some work to take it away. <laughs> like, it's like there's no, you know, have a conversation, tick a box, and say, yeah, not those mods, not those mods. Okay. So you get all modifications and you get all the data. Yeah. So. You might want to do it if you're on a, I said, relatively recent. I've been doing this for a long time, and five at the time was relatively recent. Um, what I mean is, if you go from 2.6, there are so many massive, massive structural changes between anything before a version three and probably into the version threes that functional for functional, it's very hard to do that upgrade technically. It's possible, but it's hard. Um, you might want to do it because all of your mods are fit for purpose. You had them done. They work for your steel processing business. You're still a steel processing business, so you still want to have the mods. You get all the functionality you already had before, but you get the new functionality as well, but all the stuff you previously had is still there. Um, you do it, you're doing the upgrade to gain performance. It doesn't really gain performance any more than a clean start. If anything, it gains it less, but you might still do the upgrade because you want to gain performance. You obviously get on the latest version, and the critical business process is you could take the opportunity to decide if you want to do things differently. Maybe you didn't do non-stop purchasing, so after you've upgraded, you start to do non-stop purchasing. But it's harder to change all of your business processes because they start off being exactly the same as they are today. Um, you can imagine, depending on the level of modification of your system, that can be a bit of a bugger's muddle, if you don't, if you pardon the French. Um, because you clearly could have modifications on your existing system, which are solving similar problems to things that are now standard. But if you do this, you have got that old version of it. Okay, you can't, like... You know, now, you can decide afterwards whether we want to discontinue using it and start to use it, but you do get that sort of combination of old mods that might be perfectly reasonable, but actually you could do now as a standard way of doing it. Okay. So I'm not saying it's certainly not the wrong way of doing it, but it's it's not not relevant for everybody. But as an example, we did this for Samba recently. They're a big, they, they sell licensed toys um, for Disney and those sorts of people. Um, they were on 2009 RTC, 40 odd users. Quite modified, not not exceptionally, but quite modified. The upgrade 2016 order of magnitude was about 70 days. Okay, so that puts something around that. Um, it was very well controlled at the customer side. The reason that was a successful project, as much as anything, was their IT was really good. They did a good job of UAT. They did a good job of communicating with the customer, with the user community, um, and, and so on. So the, the, that helped a lot. Um, even so, the IT manager afterwards was promoted to IT director. So that's, there's a good reason to do a successful upgrade of your IT guy. Um, we use in this a third party, we, uh, a company called uh, One Click Factory, to do um, the upgrade grunt work. There is a bunch of work which is just technical. There's a whole bunch of code here. 
We want it to be merged into this code here, and it's just mind-bogglingly time-consuming. This company have written a huge amount of automation of that because this is what they do for a living. Okay, so we use them, and they give us back the merged objects. Whatever that means, they don't do any sanity checking. We might want to look at this, but they give us back a set of most objects, but they do a lot of grunt work and they're cheap and that's why we do it. Um, so that's one organization. Um, in this particular case, we, the first thing we do is to get a copy of your objects. We, we give that to um, the one-click people and say, here's some objects. Can you give us a quote on how long you think it'll take to, mer to merge these objects? Because depending on the version you're on, and they have some tools that scan it and look for certain things that make it complicated, and they give us back a figure. So we, we get a figure for doing the technical part of the upgrade. We then say, obviously, you're going to want some, some help with UATs, data conversion, or, or, or additional data uh, uh, migration work, uh, possibly as part of that. You might want some new modules on it. You might want some user training, obviously, on the new screens and so on. Um, we put all that into a cost estimator. Um, Anne is our cost estimator expert. So to speak to, to Anne, we've got an Excel spreadsheet. And it was re the ones we've done, I mean, it's difficult to estimate these things because it's services based, but it's, it's been reasonable at the moment um, in terms of the, the, the accuracy of it. Um, we convert the objects, we run a test upgrade, you test a test upgrade, and then you get live with the new version. Now, of course, you've got to, because you're converting a lot of data, it takes a long time to convert that data into the new system on the test system, and you have to redo that work on the live system also to get it back up to date. So there's a there's also a longer cycle for doing the actual cutover on the day. Okay. It's worth bearing in mind depending on the data you've got. So you get all your data, whether that's good or bad, you get all your mods, you get all your existing processes, uh, and whatever ISB stuff you've already got, if you've already got uh, you know, drink it or one of those types of products, you'll get the version as it was when you put it in with all those mods. Okay, that, that again is something you really need some thought if you've got an additional ISV product added onto your system. That's a full upgrade. Um, and obviously, the point with, with these different ways of doing it um, are the two choices that you have to then make are, do you want to do a full upgrade or do you want to do uh, a phased approach? Obviously, if you do a full upgrade, uh, it's hard to phase it because <laughs> one day you're on the old version and the next one the new version. That's hard. Pretty much with the full upgrade, it's a big bag approach. Okay, so you're just going to do it. The risk, of course, is you've got to mitigate by doing lots of testing on it. So you make sure everything was okay, not just on the test system, but in redoing the process to make sure we can, you know, successfully repeat doing the upgrade. And then once it's done, the day after the business gets the same stuff they had before in a prettier looking screen. Um, that does require, a full upgrade particularly requires a lot more testing because you have to make all those mods you've got work. You don't have to put as much testing in to make sure the standard nav works. Of course, it does work. Uh, but if you're, if you're, particularly if you're big and complex, you might consider phasing something in. For example, quite commonly we've had people say, when we are using the new system, we want to start using CRM. We don't use CRM today. So we say, okay, well, why not? Why don't we put the 2018 system in? You start using CRM for the people that want to use CRM, rather than start using it on your old system, start using it on a new system, even before you've started bringing on all the new other departments. If you're a retailer, we're very often changing the back end without changing the, the till systems in the store, for example. Um, if you've already got a separate manufacturing system today, but in the future you want to bring that manufacturing system inside now, you might go live without the manufacturing system and then bring in the manufacturing system. So a lot of this depends on what you've got today and whether you can reasonably take a portion out. The downside to NAB is it's fully integrated. So it's hard often to say, okay, well, let's go live, but let's not do all the processing. You know, if you're currently doing all the processing in NAB, it's hard to go live on the new system without that. But we have got customers where we have done exactly that. We've moved, the new system is doing finance, lots of other stuff, but they had a very complicated telesales system in the old system. So we're simply doing an interface. They carry on putting the orders into the old system and we squirt them across into the new system and they look like orders open keyed in there. Okay? So there's lots of ways considering that phasing. It's very business specific. So it's a conversation we want to have with you. If you do that, it spreads, potentially spreads the cost over a longer period of time. Um, but you get 2018 in the business quicker, potentially, because day one, you can find a use for it. Imagine you weren't using fixed assets. Rather than get it live on the old system, put in 2018, start using fixed assets. Just get some people using one of the modules. Yeah. 
So my, my suggestions in terms of how you go about it is be careful you don't make it into the everything project. There's an upgrade, and then you go, oh, when we upgrade, we should also do this. We should also bring the manufacturing system in. We should also put mobile and in, change the warehouse to do warehouse picking with handheld terminals. <laughs> and suddenly, this project is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And apart from anything else, the cost is getting bigger and bigger. The estimates getting bigger. The complexity is getting bigger. So where possible, try and limit the upgrade to the upgrade. Okay? That's the first bit of the point. So concentrate on what you already have in the system, but add some, yeah, some easy stuff. You add panels and tiles, you add a bit of reporting and jet reports, and you get some really nice improvements for the user. They'll get loads of lovely new stuff anyway as part of the upgrade. Um, but don't try and add too many things to it. Excite people the right amount to get them excited, but not expecting solutions to every single problem they've had for the last 15 years are going to be solved when we have this new system. <laughs> Generally, there's a good reason why some of those things have got problems with the existing system. Um, define what your day in the life is. What do? You, what are your business processes? Make sure that you can you can say, well, this is how we do sales to cash. This is how we do non-stop purchasing, so that you can test those things in the new system way before you go live. And bear in mind, the go live doesn't need to be a single event. Actually, over the week coming up to the go live, you can start to load your general ledger. You can start to load your product structure. It's not that you do everything on one day. You sort of build up to going live. You start bringing in data. You start bringing, uh, making sure that certain users can come on the stream now. So go live doesn't have to be one single event. Reporting is an important one because they are difficult to upgrade if you are going from a generation one to a generation two. If you're already on generation two, it's not a problem. But if you're on generation one and you're moving to a generation two, it's vastly time consuming and not, in I would say, not worth the money. So. Assume that you will not upgrade your reports. And frankly, most people have got loads and loads of reports that they never, that nobody ever runs, nobody ever uses. And actually, you could much better solve by putting in some kind of BI tool. So think if you haven't got a BI reporting mechanism now, if you haven't got JET reports, look at doing your reporting differently. It shouldn't be in inside nav reports. That's not a good way of doing it. If you've got a lot of internally developed reports by your own IT department, they have to be changed. There's lots of stuff they'll have to change. So don't assume that all their SSRF reports they've written internally will just carry on running. They won't. Um, and as I said before, remember the old data is not going away. So that stuff is still there. If you don't bring it across to the new system, you can still access it. Even with tools like Jet, you can pull general ledger information from the old system plus general ledger information from the new system. You know, BI tools can pull data from both systems. So you can start off with a data cube of sales, which is partly loaded from old system data and gets added to by new data. So you don't have to move everything just because you want to report it. Definitely think about some kind of reporting and business strategy as part of it. So how come it costs so much to upgrade? So much depends on what you mean by so much. But this is the mistake I think people make when they go, blimey, that's expensive. It's because they've got this little system that's finance stock and order processing and an old version of NAV. They want to go to the new version of NAV, so they could do that. But they go, oh, yeah, but we also need to put an e-commerce front end. We want to do no one having the warehouse. We love the cash flow and cost accounting. We're going to implement those at the same time. Uh, we should add a BI tool to it. We've got a load of vendors who we want to send the purchase orders out to, and they log on to a portal to uh, update their purchase orders. And we're going to add a customer portal and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right. So go, that's what we're going to have in the new system. Well, and work with document management too. That's the cost of the upgrade, and that's the cost of having all the other stuff. The trouble is, if you've added all that stuff in, and you go into your boss at the proposal and say, it's only going to be a million quid, <laughs> you know, it's not fair. They go, upgrade for that? That's ridiculous. But you're not upgrading. You're, like, you're getting a whole bunch of stuff that, even if you stayed here, you wanted to add the vendor portal and the BI system and the customer portal and so on. Yeah? So at least be very clear about which part of your cost is an upgrade and which part of the things that even if you didn't upgrade, you'd be spending a load of money. That's the easiest way of looking at it. And in most cases, the things like the BI and the vendor portal and the customer portal and, and invoice batching and so on, they're all possible to put on your old system. So you could say old system plus those things equals figure. Compare it with new system plus those things equals figure. That's a fair comparison. But don't just treat it all as an upgrade cost, otherwise, the upgrade will look very expensive. We have mechanisms now to improve the way that we do uh, modifications. 
we used to only have the choice of, if we need to change standard code, putting some code in the middle of the standard code. Right? It's very efficient for us. Microsoft gives us all the code, we just stick the line of code where we need to have it. In the new world, we have what's called events, which means we can leave the standard code doing exactly what it's doing, the posting routine, for example, and we can write a separate bit of code over here that says, when the posting routine happens, run this bit of code too, which means we make no changes to standard objects. It does mean that we might make a mod that you've got on your existing system, and we do it differently in the new system. So this is something you get as a benefit of a clean start because we go, okay, there was a load of code there in the middle of the posting routine. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do it in, in an event over here. We're gonna catch the information, run through this code, and we won't change the standard posting routine. You can't do that with a full upgrade because it just takes your old code that was in the middle of the posting routine and sticks it in the middle of the new posting routine. Okay, so one of the benefits of the clean start versus the full upgrade is you get the ability to make those mods in a clean way, which is much better for future upgrades. Okay, so that's another thought that's worth considering. Equally, we have this opportunity to write what's called an extension. We'll talk more about this uh, in the D365 session after the break. Extensions are basically we write code and we don't make any changes to standard objects and we implement that that uh, extension in a, a new technology that Microsoft has given us. It never changes the standard objects. It just runs that code at runtime. So again, it's a very clean way of saying, well, if I then got a new upgraded to a new version, this extension will just be installed and it'll carry on working. Okay, so that's, a, that's, a, that's what they, they're now calling an app, but it's a, it's a beautiful new technology which, which we're using a lot to segregate our, our, our code changes. Um, if you use more add-on products, you minimize modification. So if you've got a modification for, I don't know, invoice matching or something like that, find, and there are, you know, we have them and there are other people that have products that do that and they will all keep those up to date with latest versions. So the more you solve something with a product rather than a mod, the more upgradable it is in the future. And going forward, as I said, there's more and more going to be apps, which are basically uh, pieces of nav code written outside that can be added onto a system like our Enhanced 365, the way we've written our brand new um, work, uh, uh, panels and tiles and reporting and, and so on tool. We've written it as tiny as an extension. It doesn't change any standard objects. You simply install that extension and instantly you get a whole bunch of functionality. So that is the way in the future to minimize modifications so that in future, your future upgrades are even easier. Just about on time. There was a lot of stuff. Any questions? Obviously, we can talk over the break. Generally. Could we have a copy of this presentation? Oh, certainly. So, um, we'll, we'll send this out to everybody. Yeah, yeah. We, we are. We're recording it as well. So, yeah. if you really, really want to listen to it again, but you could definitely send it to somebody else and let them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And reasons to upgrade. Is there anything? Um, in terms of security, PCI, GDPR, government. <laughs> so, can I park GDPR? Because that will open a whole can of worms. Um, the security model actually in NAV isn't different now than it was before. Okay. The I'm going to say the main difference is so we have an add-on product called Enforcement, which makes it very easy to set up user security. The biggest problem in security in the nav world today is most people have their users set up as super users. I mean, I don't know what percentage, but it would be a high prior, a high percentage. Have you got the same problem? Like most people have got users, lots of people got people set up as users, maybe super users of data, but they're at least that. Because they often try to set up permissions, then the user can get a load of errors. They couldn't work out what they, what table they had to give permission to, so they just made them super user for now and then they never went back and reviewed it. So in a new world, I would certainly, and even on your existing world, I say, if you have a problem with security, add something like our enforcement product, makes it very easy to set up permissions, and then you at least will do it. GDPR is going to be an issue, whichever version of NAV you're on, uh, we are uh, currently writing tools to help the process, for example, of obfuscating data for a customer who said he doesn't want you to hold his data anymore, but you don't want to delete all the underlying data. So we're, we are writing products to help with 
some of those GDPR uh, requirements. That will be our user day. Should we go to our user day in November? Sorry? Should we go to our user day in November? And we'll be launching that. Anybody else before we break? Super, let's have a break and a cup of coffee. Oh.